Hi, my name is Lauren French and I'm the Chief Flight Instructor here at Alpine Flight Training Mountain CFI. We're putting together a, a series of videos that kind of give the fundamental principles related to our mountain flying course. This is no means uh, meant to be an exhaustive uh, study on the topic. We generally spend two or three days on this with a pilot, uh, honing these skills and, and teaching this content. But uh, the intent of our, our five-part video series was to act as a refresher for some that have already gone through this, but also to kind of give uh, uh, people a taste of what it is that we do here at our uh, flight school. Anyway, um, today's topic is part one. It's basically the route aspects of mountain flying. But before I jumped into the route, I wanted to refresh what the kind of the five uh, mountain flying basic principles were. And, uh, you know, when people come to us, uh, flatlanders, uh, never flown in the mountains, this is where we start, these five key principles. And so <clears throat> today we're going to cover route. Uh, but the other ones uh, that we're going to cover in future videos include performance, weather, aircraft positioning, and survival. Okay, well, so with that, we're going to move on to uh, our next, to our, our main topic here, which is route. Uh, with regards to the route, the key considerations that we want to uh, examine as we're building the route is the altitude of the route, for one. Um, does it require oxygen? Um, how long will it, you know, will we be at what altitude uh, to cross certain passes and so forth? Um, with that altitude also is the aircraft capabilities. Aircraft capabilities is kind of a two-part. Uh, number one is will we be able to get to the altitude that we need to get to to cruise the route we're trying to uh, build. But number two, um, you know, along that route are we going to have uh, sufficient time to climb. Say we're departing a mountain airport and the route takes us, uh, uh, you know, up a valley and, and that valley is ascending terrain. Will we be able to climb in that? Will, is there pl places that we can circle? And then lastly, uh, we want to look at the winds and the weather. Um, you know, the, what the wind's doing and, um, you know, your ceiling can influence what that route's going to be through the mountains. Uh, on a day with low ceilings, and I'm not talking about, you know, a thousand feet, uh, you know, above ground level ceiling. I'm talking four and five thousand feet uh, of ceiling. You'll still have uh, the ceiling obscuring the mountain tops, and in some cases, obscuring the pass. Um, but also, when we talk about winds, winds is a big uh, concern uh, for planning our route because uh, if our uh, if our winds are really high, that may uh, cause us concern for a really high route. Uh, but uh, you know. And, and we'd want to take a, a lower route. Um, it might it cause us concern for crossing certain passes. Okay, so let's take a look at some of this in uh, Sky Vector. Okay, so here we are in Sky Vector. Uh, you know, you can investigate and research your route using Sky Vector, um, Wing X Pro, ForeFlight. I mean, all these tools do the same thing. But the bottom line is, you need a you need a good tool to be able to calculate. Uh, distances and, and do a lot of the, the mental math for you to figure out um, what the right route is without maybe going uh, straight to a sectional. Uh, for this first example, I'm going to start with a, a pretty basic flight here, and that is uh, Eagle County Regional, our home base, over to Leadville. Um, and so <clears throat> I'm going to build that route, and as we can see, uh, Sky Vector by default, it, it's going to do what? It's going to go straight line. Now, the, the thing about this route, and this is a you know this is the curveball route, it's it, or it's a uh, the softball route, rather. It's it's real easy. It, you know, we haven't uh, built anything terribly complex here. It's a it's airport that's, uh, you know, 37 miles away. However, this 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 route does take us over some of the highest terrain in Colorado. So so now is where you start asking you some questions about. Um, your aircraft. Uh, are you carrying oxygen? Do you want to use oxygen? Would you rather stay below 14? Would you rather stay below 12.5? Um, you know, you, you can go up to 14 as long as, you know, the time between 12.5 and 14 is, is less than 30 minutes, which is a lot of times all you need to cross a pass. Um, but at the same time, a lot of people uh, uh, try to avoid that added risk and they, uh, and they fly low. So, the other piece of that is they may not have an aircraft that can fly that high. Um, if you have a uh, Cessna 172, you got a couple people in it, ah, this is probably a pretty bad route for you to fly. But the flight is very doable for your equipment. Um, in this case, we would take our route and we would maybe fly the low terrain. This would give us time to climb as we fly up this uh, valley, fly the low altitude route up this valley. We uh, can put a uh, 
put a point there. We would continue to fly up the valley over Red Cliff, a lot of uh, uh, landing spots there. Um, plan that. And then if you look here, uh, Tennessee Pass, uh, 10 uh, right in there. And so we'd maybe fly that low pass, which means on this particular route, going Eagle County across the Continental Divide down to Leadville, which is North America's highest airfield, um, you know, it's safe to say we could cross that pass probably at 11.5, uh, have a good thousand feet of clearance over the pass, and uh, that would be a, 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 a safe route to follow wouldn't put us up into a uh, extremely high altitude and and is a, and a something that can be accomplished most of the year by most single engine general aviation aircraft okay okay uh, so let's try look at a couple more routes now um, this is an example I like to bring up in uh, in our classroom uh, a couple years ago we had a gentleman fly a perfectly good working airplane on a clear blue day into a mountain. Um, you know, everybody wondered, uh, you know, how could that happen? The bottom line was he kind of violated all the principles of mountain flying and he violated them all at the same time. The result was uh, that accident. Um, just as an interesting study, the, the, the route of flight was Eagle to Salt Lake City. Okay, um, this was the flight he plotted and he chose to depart Eagle and fly basically a direct line to um, to Salt Lake City. The aircraft impacted about 16 miles from Eagle County Regional Airport right up here in the flat tops. As you can take a look at this, um, down here at Eagle, elevation 6,500 feet at the airport, um, but it rapidly, I mean, you know, within within about 10 miles it rapidly rises to over 11,000 feet. Um, so a very, very steep climb was necessary to get over that. Clearly, uh, the aircraft he was flying did not have the performance to do this. Um, anyway, with that said, this was the route he planned. Now I want you to take a look at something here. This route, which is Eagle to Salt Lake City International, it's a minute 56, right? A minute 56, or I'm sorry, an hour 56 with 242 nautical miles. So we have about 242 nautical miles, an hour and 56 minutes. Had the, per the pilot of that airplane simply done a little route planning and, and kind of researched this a little deeper, um, what he could have done is he could have actually started out to the southwest. This is a low terrain um, uh, pass, Cottonwood Pass, out of Eagle. And had he bent his course to right here and then went on uh, direct, take a look at what happens. When hour 56 at 2.42, we're going to plan that point. And now an hour 56 turns to two hours. So that's uh, that this change by departing southwest and then getting around that train and going direct actually costs the flight a matter of four minutes and adds four miles. Okay, um, pretty nominal change in the overall scope of the plan, but by doing so, that gets them out of that high terrain and it's smooth sailing all the way to Salt Lake City. Um, interesting. So, and here's the thing. Um, I would be one to tell you that the four minutes that it says it's going to cost you to do that probably does not even exist. And the reason is this. By going the low pass, you're able to level off sooner or go into a cruise climb much quicker uh, rather than following a VY airspeed as you try to outclimb the terrain. Okay, So this would be another good example how a little bit of flight planning um, really saves you a ton of headache, uh, takes a ton of risk out of your flight. Um, no matter where you're going, you, you know, you, we, bottom line is you just have to have a little strategy. Uh, my family, we frequently uh, travel to Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, um, and that's Eagle to DTL. We're going to clear this route. We're going to add that route. And if you take a look at this, what it does is it flows up through uh, Rocky Mountain National Park and some of the highest terrain in Colorado, uh, you know, basically northern Colorado. Um, at the time, I was flying a Cessna Cardinal, you know, which has moderate performance. It's not real good at high altitude, but this was very doable. Even in the summertime, max gross weight, we could still fly this in the Cessna Cardinal. We simply had to plan a good route. If you take a look at this out of Eagle, this is not the right route. Um, the strategy here, 
you know, and first of all, uh, five hours and 10 minutes, I'm not probably not going to make that without either a bathroom break or a fuel stop. So what we would do is we would actually, instead of plan taking off full tanks and planning our fuel stop uh, well down the road, we would actually um, build our route so that we would take off with a third of a tank, go to Cheyenne, and then fill up at Cheyenne, and from Cheyenne we could go direct the rest of the uh, des to the destination. Okay, but now the process of getting to Cheyenne is really what the mountain flying was about, because um, from Cheyenne to Minnesota there's nothing in the way. So flying the Cessna Cardinal, what we would do is we would follow the color of terrain that was compatible with our aircraft, which is this lower terrain. Okay, keep in mind we're departing a 6,500 foot airport. We're going to cross the Colorado Rockies. Right, um, but the deal is, is in doing so, we can actually fly a route that doesn't take us much above 9,000 feet. Okay, and 9,000 feet is uh, is very doable altitude for most aircraft, and so we would fly this valley right up through here. Okay, and and sure, it's a little bit of a zigzag, but you know this is much much easier than. Uh, um, let's zoom out one here. This is much easier than uh, trying to fly over that high pass. And so here we go. And then right here is the last is kind of the last thing that gets in the way. It's this little pass here, north of Walden Jackson. And from there, it's all descending terrain into Cheyenne. Okay. Now, granted, that adds a little bit of time. It adds about 30 minutes. Does the 30 minutes actually is that actually going to happen? Uh, some of it, yes. It probably adds in reality about 15 minutes to the flight because we're able to get into a cruise climb so much faster. So looking at that, um, let's just zoom out and kind of show you what that route looks like. So there's our route through the Rockies to get out to the front range of Colorado. And then from there, we would go direct to our destination because it's all low terrain from there. Okay, so uh, the the last couple you know examples, we talked a lot about airplane performance, picking the low altitude predominantly, uh, you know, on the basis of the performance of the aircraft or or for reasons of staying at a low altitude for oxygen. The last one I want to cover real quick is going to be um, route related to weather. Okay, um, and I, here's a good example. I had a I had a, a pilot up here flying with us a couple weeks ago. And uh, he has a second home in Gunnison, lives in Texas. And so, you know, for him to get to his uh, home in Gunnison, um, you know, we did a lot of flying down in kind of the southern or central part of the state. Um, you know, Pueblo, kind of like Cheyenne, is a great gateway. You can go direct from anywhere in the east to Pueblo. Uh, from Pueblo, uh, you, you know, you can make a strategy call to, to head, up the, uh, head up the valley uh, the rest of the way to Gunnison. Um, you know, one of the things I, I tell people to consider is I say, you know, you always have options. Um, sometimes the right option is that the conditions are not conducive to doing uh, the route you're, you want to do, and the option may be to park the plane for the day. Um, just like, you know, you, you get into, uh, you know, performance conditions. Later on, we'll talk about this in performance, and you say, I have too much baggage, too much people, too much fuel. You have options. You throw the bags on FedEx. Um, you put a person on a commercial flight or you eliminate some fuel but you change your situation until you're satisfied that it's a safe situation for flying your airplane. Same thing is true here with the route planning and that is you know let's assume you uh, started out from Texas first thing in the morning uh, you arrived into Pueblo at noon uh, the the winds at altitude are uh, uh, you know uh, 30 gusting to 45 at the top of uh, Monarch Pass you know, that may not be the right time to go try to cross that plane, uh, pass unless you have an airplane that has really good performance. You're able to get up into, you know, 16, 17, 18,000 feet. Um, but taking this example here, you know, we fly, we're flying from Pueblo. We're going to come up here through, um, um, oh, I believe it's Highway 40 here to Salida. We're going to plan that as a point. And then from there, this is... Monarch Pass, and let's zoom in and take a look at that. Monarch Pass is right here, okay? And so Monarch Pass, 11312, okay? Uh, this is the uh, AWOS station I was, I was talking about. As you're approaching Monarch Pass, you can actually tune in 124, 175, and you can listen to 
the weather conditions, the wind conditions at the top of that pass. It's not associated with an airport. Something a little different. You don't see that everywhere. You do see that in Colorado, though. Um, in this case, we could plan our route. You know, if it's a if it's a great morning, calm winds, cold temps. Uh, you know, uh, you know, performance isn't an issue, and uh, the winds are not an issue either. Then it might be good for us to plan our our route. Um, straight through this pass, okay? Now another possibility though is we actually can take go down here. So let's say we weren't happy with the conditions relating to wind going over this pass because what this the, the, the problem with this pass is uh, it forces us to fly a fairly tight canyon that may potentially have a lot of downdrafts especially if the wind is out of the west, okay? Um, another way to get around that is you take down here, take a look down here. We have Marshall Pass at 10.8 and Poncha Pass, which uh, we can see that that's below 9,000 just by the color of the terrain. Well, that may Monarch may not be the right, the, you know, the right call. Uh, so the the better call might be to uh, to take the uh, to take the route here south to uh, Poncha Pass and then through Marshall Pass. So just to wrap up, uh, I hope you found that informative. Um, interesting, enjoyable, and it gave you some good ideas as to what we uh, teach here at uh, Mountain CFI as well as some ideas for your future flying. Um, just as a reminder, this was the first installment. We're going to do five of these videos. The next uh, four will focus on performance, weather, aircraft positioning, and survival. Uh, we're actually out uh, shooting photos right now in support of some of those units. Um, but look for those in the next coming weeks. We'll probably uh, produce one unit every couple weeks until we get uh, these five done. We welcome uh, <coughs> comments, questions. You can mail those to info at alpineflighttraining.com. Give us a couple days to respond because we uh, usually get quite a bit of mail. Um, but uh, certainly we'll respond to any questions that were sent. And uh, if you'd like more information, um, we run two websites. MountainCFI.com is really geared towards teaching the mountain flying. Uh, we put a lot of neat information into the blog uh, there, different ideas, uh, things that reinforce these topics. We also have AlpineFlightTraining.com. That's really for the full-service flight school that we have. Uh, we do primary training, private instrument, um, commercial, multi-engine, all that kind of stuff that uh, you typically find at, uh, uh, you know, at, at your flight school operations. Um, and you can visit either of those for more information. They have a lot of different uh, information on the blog. If you want to schedule training, you can do it through those websites, or you can just give us a call at the office, the Flight School office phone number, 970-401-5105. Thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you at a, uh, on a, at a future training event. Thanks.